hello everyone welcome to the new video so yesterday i had a discussion with my project spark uh, actually i'm not assigned to the project i'm just nominated for one project so they i think after the discussion from with the project spark uh, maybe they will schedule a client interview or something like this so i'm waiting for that so uh, the discussion was very you know uh, normal like uh, how you have worked on and regarding what all scripting you have if you have written if you worked on scripting languages what all scripts you have written so the discussion was very normal and everything and one thing i want to tell that uh, uh, the spark was also uh, you know he was focusing on python so guys if you are learning if you are thinking to learn any uh, coding language i would say as a devops engineer you can focus on learning python that will be good even i will be uh, doing it because i haven't written scripts on python yet so i will also be doing it uh, then uh, yeah so uh, today our video will be the step four of deploying an application so that will complete most of our uh, you know a uh, part uh, where you can explain uh, that uh, how have you worked on any project in a, in your interview uh, last uh, i think step is rem uh, remaining where we uh, where i'll tell you that how you can set up monitoring and logging so yeah uh, let's go and discuss today we will discuss that how to deploy an application after the after this after deploying an application we have to do monitoring and logging so they are uh, the next step so step one was provisioning the infrastructure step two was fetching the source code step three was creating the ci cd pipeline step four is deploying application so for deploying application we can use two things Kubernetes. If we are basically, I'm focusing on deploying an application on EKS because that's what is used nowadays. So uh, that's why I'm focusing on that only. Uh, that uh, we can use Kubernetes manifest file or Helm charts to deploy the application. The prerequisite to you know uh, deploy the application is that kubectl should be installed on the cluster. So uh, I, when I told that when, when we are provisioning the uh, infrastructure and we are creating the cluster and all, at that time only we should uh, make sure that kubectl is also installed. If it is not, then we can do it. We should do it, of course. After that, if we are doing it using a manifest file, so we have to create a a yaml file like i've created this is one sample file where we uh, how we can use a manifest file or create a manifest file so uh, here we have to give the api version kind so this is the uh, like uh, what api version means what all apis can we use uh, like what all apis are available in that version so we have to mention the api version deployment is the kind of metadata specifications and all so this is something as a sample i have given in containers what all containers will learn so it is always uh, you know uh, advised uh, that instead of uh, deploying pod we should use deployment as a you know uh, as a service so because uh, a deployment has rolling update and you know uh, it it achieve rolling updates zero downtime and uh, uh, yeah so many features are there so that's why so uh, next way is doing it through helm charts so helm charts are uh, is a great way to manage kubernetes application because once you create the helm charts you can reuse it so that is one thing uh, that uh, create, doing it through mcharts is also you know uh, advisable and uh, you know uh, before using helm in ci cd pipeline we should make sure that helm is also installed on the kubernetes cluster if it is not then these are the steps that we can follow that we should run in our kubernetes cluster to install helm 
when we when we are creating the chart for any application or deploying any application then we have to write this command helm create my app this is some sample so it will create a structure like this where chart.yaml values.yaml charts you know uh, it will contain all the metadata about the charts the templates templates can be deployment and all the services ingress service whatever services we are going to you know use in this application that, that will be present there you know their uh, manifest will manifest where our yaml file will be present can we ignore something whatever uh, data we don't want to push or you know exposed then th those files can be mentioned over here then um chart.yaml will be like it will contain the metadata about the chart that what is this chart like uh, what what app it is deploying and what version it is then values.yaml is basically once you you know uh, specify all the values over here you can use the values in your deployment dot so that you know you don't have to hard code basically uh, you, you can refer it in any of the charts okay so uh, this is a deployment or templates.yaml file so here we are see we are using values or replica account that we have uh, you know mentioned over here release dot name is something whenever a, a application is installed on a cluster so uh, a release is created so uh, we can so that we can keep a track so release dot name and everything this is also one kind of a file that will be created already so if suppose a earlier version is there so whatever the version is present if the uh, upper version is present of the application it will take according like that so uh, in this way in ci cd pipeline what we have to uh, give it in a step is like this helm upgrade install my app and from which you know what uh, at where your file is present from where you should refer the chart so all that you have to mention once the pipeline is fin finished then we can verify that the application is deployed using the following command kubectl get pods so if all the pods came up and running after this so it means that your application has been deployed successfully okay uh, there are other ways also like in aws devops we are using code deploy in azure devops we are using azure app services for deploying web applications and uh, argo cd is used for deploying the application so if you want to learn more about all this please let me know uh, i'll uh, cover all these points too but basically the gist of deploying an application is almost same like this in code deploy you know age see whenever uh, we are deploying any application on a server we need an agent okay so in code deploys also you know they it requires basically an agent uh, and we have to write a yaml file for this also so uh, agent of code deploy should be installed uh, on the cluster and then the deployment can the uh, uh, deployment of application can happen so yeah if uh, basically the gist is like this only how we can install and everything so whenever like i'll uh, i'll jot down all the points together for you so whenever you if if it is asked that uh, can you explain any project so you can tell that i deployed an application on eks or aks server and for that uh, you know there was it was a java application or something like this you can tell or it was a whatever application what all tech it was using you can tell so for that i first of all i provisioned the application uh, provision the cluster using terraform after provisioning that i have installed you know uh, i or you can tell that you uh, if you have used cloud formation or something like this you can tell that too after that uh, we uh, like i used uh, github or whatever tool git lab whatever hcm tool you are using for fetching the source or for keeping the codes you can tell that there we had kept the code and we started you know i started uh, creating the pipeline after creating the pipeline we uh, you know we used to uh, deploy the application like this so in this way 
uh, you can tell your project so it depends like if you have worked on only one project and they you you have been working on one project only and uh, you have been deploying the same application you can tell like that and if you have worked on multiple projects then you can tell the application of that project like what application it was whether java based application or what whatever the application it is whatever tools you have used and uh, you were deploying it so this you can tell after that on later stage that i will discuss is how you can set up the monitoring and logging because that is very important after deploying any application so that will cover on later i hope uh, all the steps are clear till now so that's all for today's video i hope it's helpful and please let me know your views in comment section so yeah that's all bye take care